All right, welcome back to another episode. This week we have Cameron Nelligan on, who is a professional surf videographer in Southern California. I've known him my entire life. I used to, I grew up in Southern California, and we are family friends, so we've known each other forever. Um, Cameron, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, how's it going? Uh, like what Ryan said, my name is Cameron Nelligan, and um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a surf videographer and. Yeah, I kind of just like group surfing my whole life, and I realized one day I was like picked up a camera, and started shooting when I was had an accident and I couldn't go surf, and realized I was pretty good at it, and just stuck to it. And one thing led to the, the other. I was at a film school two, or a year ago, and then did an apprenticeship, and now I'm in a really good spot. Now, like I work full time for this production company. I always shoot surfing, and I do a little bit of like. Uh, mini documentary series like kind of work so i work with like other things because you don't want to like be in one place or like have all your eggs in one basket so that, that's kind of like how i look at it right now like i'm like surf videographer but then also like can do other things too that's awesome dude yeah i've definitely i've seen a lot of your work i've seen some of the stuff that you put out recently obviously i mean you've been killing it so that's super sick um i'm obviously your biggest fan besides your parents probably um, but yeah, I just love everything and I'll, I remember I'll show people, um, and I kind of, we were talking about this earlier. One of the main, like one of the, uh, besides like, obviously the fact that like, we're both creatives and we like do this and it's awesome and we're both killing it right now. Um, I wanted that really have you on here because like what you do is so different than like, I feel like a lot of the people that typically interact with the stuff that I'm making. And so I feel like this will be really cool because I know whenever I'm like scrolling through my feed and I see like surf stuff. Whenever I'm with like, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I'm with any like my videographer friends or anything like that, um, I show them your videos and they're always like, that's like the sickest thing ever. Like they think it's so cool. Um, and it's just like, I mean, the shots are great. Some of the opportunities that you've had, like the places you've been doing this, like you get to go to a lot cooler places than I do um, for like going. I mean, I get to travel, but like last year football season, I went to, to Lincoln, Nebraska. I think. Portugal might be a little cooler than that or some of the other places you've been like Hawaii and you're like I'm a little jealous there even you were in spent some time in Florida this year right like you've been all over right uh yeah I was in Florida I was in Portugal for a month um partially seeing my girlfriend partially not it was very mixed but um she's also a professional surfer so that kind of helped um but yeah like Oh my gosh, the opportunities has been insane. I work at Kelly Slater Wave Pool right now, and the amount of like insane surfers that come through, like Kelly Slater, Kai Lenny, Chris Moore, like all these pro people, and being able to like shoot them. I mean, it's kind of like what you do. Like you're shooting like this football, or I don't, I don't even know football to be honest. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I didn't either until like two years ago. No, it's I mean it's, it's super comparable. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. I mean, like I've been in situations where like. Oh, shoot. Like, I remember this is like kind of a deep cut for me, but I think it compares kind of like with you, like filming all these professional surfers and like having your foot in the door kind of there. Um, two years ago, we have our, so our, we have a huge rivalry with Texas, right? Um, it's called the Red River Showdown or Shootout if uh, you're an older person and want to call it that. Um, and so last, it's in, and it's in Texas. They play it in Dallas. So it's close to where I live. And so last year or two years ago, I went down and filmed it. And I don't, are you, do you know who CD Lamb is? So he's a wide receiver for the Cowboys. He's their wide receiver one. And he was like OU's like guy. Like two years ago, three years ago, or maybe it was like five years ago, I think. He was like, the, everyone loved him. He was on the team when Baker Mayfield won the Heisman and then Kyler Murray won the Heisman. Like he was like our receiver. Um, and so he got drafted by the Cowboys. And so he was flying in a helicopter with some donors to the game. And and up until six in the morning, the day of the game, I was supposed to fly in the helicopter with them and like take pictures of them and like be like creating content for like recruiting and stuff. And I bought new sunglasses. I got new shoes. I like got an outfit for that because I was like, I would show up with like the cleanest fit on and I'm going to go up to CD and be like, dude. I am your guy. Like I want to create anything you ever want. Like hire me. I will drop out right now. I look like, I'm like, and I feel like that might be kind of similar with where you're at. Like you have all these like professional surfers that are like, that you are shooting for. And then they see your content that you're making. And you know, all it takes is like one dude to be like, 
hey, like, I like that. Do you want to, like, go and do this with me and, like, shoot this? And so I feel like it's pretty similar in that regard. Oh, it's very similar in that regard. I mean, I've been given other opportunities for, like, editing uh, people's stuff. But, I don't know, there's, like, a fine line in, like, what I want to, like, stick with. Yeah, and what what is that? Like, what do you want to, like, kind of go into? Uh, Definitely more storytelling. I feel like it's kind of being lost a little bit. Like, versus, like, right now, it's, like, you got to throw everything on to, like, social, like, really quick. Like, boom, you know? Like, there's yeah not enough time for, like, a good story to be put out. So it's kind of cool to be doing, like, kind of other, like, jobs so you can have, like, when you're doing, like, maybe you're shooting surfing and you're like, okay, like how can I tell a little story in this versus just like putting out like um, content and just like, just regular surfing, you know, like if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I definitely get that. I fall into the the habit of, uh, of just kind of throwing stuff on social media sometimes for sure. Uh, especially for like TikTok. I feel like TikTok has definitely kind of been like with like, especially how you can kind of like, spend like i've spent vid- time and i'm sure you can relate to this making a video for like 10 hours like i make like this to get it and i post it and then it gets like 100 200 views and then i just like post a clip and i'm like here's a picture of the camera i filled with like 2000 views like what like it's i feel like production value and like effort doesn't translate to results on short like other way social media is going like in short form content i don't think it directly translates i think it's honestly ridiculous like what was it i put up like something i was working on got like 50 likes did awful i put this one fat guy boogie boarding at the wave pool put a song on it and it got like six million views with like (laughs) fifty thousand likes and i was like this is stupid six million Huh? Did I hear that right? What did you say? Uh, six million views. Holy shit, dude! God damn. That's how many views I've gotten in my entire like career. That is crazy. Yeah, it, it's it was pretty ridiculous, and I was like, this literally proves my point. Like, I didn't. I just put it on, found a song, and then it, I just let it sit there, and then it exploded. That's crazy. That's. That's awesome. First off, that's super cool. I didn't know that. I that's awesome. Second off, I, so I'm in. I'm not actually in this class, but I have a buddy that's in like a social media marketing class. And now take this with a grain of salt because it's like I don't know a lot of the stuff that they teach, like especially in like like school for like social media and everything. It's like I feel like it's all like ten years late. Like everything's lagging. And so, but according to his teacher, five million views. Anything more than five million views is considered viral. So, that was, you had a viral video. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty sick, dude. That's like, have, do you ever, whenever something like that happens and you make a video and it gets a lot of views like that, do you ever, this is like that I like, like compare it to like populations of cities. I have. Like I was in Hawaii over the summer last year and I, I think one of my videos uh, did pretty good numbers like when I was there. And it got like, I think it got like maybe 100,000 views. And I was like, what's the population of Oahu? I was like, <laughs> it was like, if, if like, and then you're like, why? and it's like, I don't remember what it was, but I think whatever the amount of views, like, or maybe I was looking at like my total views. Like, I think I hit 5 million views when I was in Hawaii, like total across everything. And so I was like, I wonder like, and then I looked it up and I had more views. And then I was like walking throughout the rest of the day. And I was just like, that person would have seen my video. That person would have seen, like, just like seeing everyone. And it's like, I feel like we definitely become, and I bet you kind of feel this way too, like muted to um, like how many people are actually seeing or making. Like 6 million people is so many people. Like you couldn't get 6 million people together. Like then you wouldn't be able to have an event where you have 6 million people come and be at one place. That's not possible. It's insane. Like. That's kind of crazy to think about. Like, there's no, like, you couldn't do that. Like, it's not, like, that's like, honestly, though, I think it should be more like, than six million because, like, people would, like, repost it and it would get, like, a million views after that. So, like, it was yeah, just, like, like, other accounts. On other yeah. Accounts. So, I don't know. It's fine. I wonder if there's, like, an app or something that you can use to, like, track the, like, 
when you post it and then someone else post it. Because, like, that's what we, when we were working for the World Series last year, we posted a video and then Bleacher Report reposted it and it did like numbers on Bleacher Report. And so I was always, but like, it was separate stats. So I was like, I wonder if there's a way that you can like link those two or like if there's a thing. If not, that's a million dollar idea for someone that they want to help the creatives out. That would be an insane like app to have. I don't know. Are you familiar with Gondola? No. I think I might have told you about it before, maybe. It's like, so it's what I use. It's kind of like a d digital portfolio for like creatives. I really like it. Um, it's primarily for like, like a lot of the people that I've seen use it are um, like sports videographers, like guys that I work with like in football or like different creatives, like maybe like just like, um, but I, it would 100% work for like, it works for anything. Like they have all kinds of like metrics, but it pretty much tracks like how many views, engagement, like likes, retweets, comments, like all the different kinds of things that you get across all your content. All you got to do is like go on your tweets and like link it and it just connects to your Twitter. Um, and so all you got to do is like link your posts across any social media, just like copy the link and then you put it on there and it just keeps track of all the engagement on there. And so it kind of does that, but that'd be cool if they added that. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. Gondola is really cool. That's how I know like how many views I have and all that is because like I'll post a video and then I'll just drop the link in there. Because for like when I'm creating, and I'm sure it's the same way with you when you're creating for the surf ranch, like, um, or maybe they, do they tag you when you post video, when they post videos that you make? So that's a whole different like thing kind of with that kind of stuff. It's like, uh, we're hot, we're contracted out to the surf ranch, but we have the only contract and, uh, we're creating a highlight reel of the day. So that's pretty much what happens. Yeah. So no, it's really rare that we get like tagged in anything. But like you gotta like go up to like the client, but it's very comp like it's kind of stupid sometimes because like maybe I'll get tagged and like the drone op won't get tagged and like you'll post something and he's like what the fuck like why aren't I tagged in it and then like it's yeah it's stupid like then like you get pissed off at each other for no reason like it's kind of backwards yeah so Gondola would fix that because <laughs> on all you gotta do on there is you just go on you link it. And then it'll like, like the other account, like the surf ranch would never even see it. I mean, I don't think it would, it wouldn't be a problem if they saw it either. Unless it's like, I don't think it would violate any kind of contract and like that. But like, all it is, it's like on a website. And so you put the link in and then you can just say like, like, oh, I was a videographer. And then the drone pilot, you put the drone pilot in, he was a drone pilot. And it has like all those things already lined up. It's pretty sweet. It's really great for like collab, like collaborative things, because then um, you can go on there and like for me it has like all of my videos that I've made and then underneath it it says like what I did on it or if I worked on other with it on it with other people it has them there too it's pretty cool um the whole idea they like their whole like uh like mission statement is like crediting creators like getting people credit for what they make yeah it's really awesome I like them a lot um so they're in Denver Colorado is where they're stationed um but yeah they're pretty cool so kind of going back to like what you were just talking about a little bit with like, I want to talk about like what you, when you go out and shoot, like, let's say like, maybe like, let's do like two versions of this. Um, because obviously you work a lot with the surf ranch, but I'm also interested just like, I remember we tried to do it last year, just didn't really work out. Um, but like what it worked, what's, what it looks like. Maybe like if you're going to go shirt, shirt, shoot surfing on the beach, like if you're going to go shoot at the beach and like do some surfing there versus like the surf rash like what are you doing for both those like what are you bringing like what's your setup um like walk me through like maybe what a day looks like at both of those and then maybe we can like compare and contrast and talk about like why those are different okay um all right i could start with the surf ranch that's pretty easy pretty much like we like wake up at 6 30 get just like you know the day roll in roll up to the surf ranch and then um i bring like a a fluid head tripod. Um, what else? I have a Black Magic 6K Pro. Um, and then I use like a 100 to 400 uh, Canon IS lens. And it's pretty much it, actually. And actually, um, an e bike with a cart on it. Kind of different. So, that, so pretty much what it is, it's like I put my camera with the lens on and then attached to the tripod or the, the sticks and then I throw it on the cart so I can go back and forth and catch every single wave because the 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 wave pool it's not like a wave that just like pushes out it's on like a 
there's a hydrofoil on, in the pool, which is like 700 yards long. And it goes one way and goes the other way. So you have three minutes to go from one side of the pool to the next side, set up, get ready, and then start rolling to get it. And then run back on the bike, put your camera in there safely, and then ride all the way to the other. So it's it's actually so stressful. Yeah, it could be just constantly. It's like you have to get every wave. Like that's what you're getting paid for. If you're going to the beach and you're just shooting a regular surfer, like I, I usually like bring my drone, get some B-roll shots, bring pretty much that same setup, maybe bring my water housing, jump in the water, get some shots. Like it's it's very like I can do whatever I want when I go to the beach and it depends on who I'm shooting at the surf ranch. Like I land, like land shot. That's all I do. Sometimes yeah. I'll jump wool with like water housing or a GoPro and get some water shots, but it's very slim. Or I'll be on a jet, there's a jet ski and I'll be on the back of the ski um, without water housing, holding my black magic, shooting from the ski while they're riding the wave. That's kind of sick. So you get on a jet ski without water housing? Yeah. Dude, that is like some serious I can't even imagine with your personal oh, That's scary. <laughs> well, I don't know if I, I could ever do that. That's like I I guess like that's like your job, like you're more used to it. I had to shoot rowing in OKC. We have a rowing team. And so for that, like I got on the boat with the coaches because they have like like a pontoon boat pretty much. And but it doesn't have walls. It's like a pontoon boat without walls. And even then, like, I was just sitting on the back of it, and I was, like, like literally, like, sitting on my butt, like, my legs, like, just spread out, like, for, like, grip, like, just trying to, like, and I'm just, like, sitting there, like, with the camera, like, frozen, like, like, it's, like, holding on for dear life, like, holding this, like, I was, like, it wasn't, it was an A7 III, so, like, a good camera, but, like, it wouldn't even be the end of the world, like, I mean, at the time, that was all we had, so that would have been bad, and... That was like my third ever time filming anything, so like I would have been grilled. But, um, yeah, I I I was like terrified on a boat that like I was never gonna fall off of unless like I passed out and like rolled off of it. So so that is, that is crazy, dude. And you're like on our, like, are you riding the wave on the jet ski? Oh yeah, the, the wave's going like we're going like thirty five miles an hour. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's nuts. How do you even like get on it? Like, is it just shallow and then you like just hop on and then? Um, so at the boat do... ramp, I kind of just like jump on the ski with like everything, and then I got like batteries and like SD or C fast cards in my pocket just so I could like keep switching. But there's been some times where I've almost lost my camera, but definitely a learning moment. And then let's see, a couple weeks ago, I got hired to do a Sea Dew commercial. Um with uh zach efron's brother dylan efron he's more of like an investor oh, okay uh um, we became very good friends but he's like yeah like uh can you come and shoot from the ski i'm like hell yeah i could do it never shot from the ski in the ocean the scariest thing i've ever done because like salt water is like jumping on my camera i'm just like holy sh you're freaking out like my camera's done but it's fine <laughs> you didn't use water housing for that either <laughs> no, I didn't. so what is the purpose of not using Like, why wouldn't you use water housing in those scenarios? I mean, I would. It, they're just very expensive. Oh, so it's just a matter of, like, not being able to get it? Yeah. For that? Is it because of the lens you're using? Do you have to get, like, a different version of it? or? Um, so for more of the cinema cameras, like Blackmagic, Reds, Aries, like, they're all custom uh, housings. So, like, for you, like, you can't just go buy one. Okay. Like, I have another housing. I could actually show you. Did you get, like, a rack? Okay. Like, this is, like, a regular housing for, like, a DSLR. And you can kind of put, like, any camera in it. Okay. It's not that big of a deal, but, like, some of those bigger housings, like, those are with, like, nuts that you screw on. And you're kind of betting against yourself and you're like do i want to bet against myself in like a more expensive camera no i don't so like some of these bigger housings they're like way more expensive and like they have different clamps so it's just like do i have like 6k for just a housing kind of thing 
Yeah, I get that. That's crazy, though. I mean, that is... I respect it, though. I, I could always, like... I mean, I'm sure the shots you get are, like, super sick, too. I That's that's a pretty unique situation to be in there, like, shooting on a jet. Like, I can't even... That's something that I'm pretty confident I won't be in a position to shoot for a while, if ever, just because of, like, the trajectory of, like, my career, at least. So it's super cool hearing, like, the other side of it, where, like, this is, like... I know it's maybe not every day, but I mean, like, it's a pretty frequent, like, maybe, maybe not, but like you're shooting on jet skis, like you're shooting cert, like that's pretty cool. So I, that's awesome. That's crazy. Dude, that's, that's, yeah, that's nuts. When you're like shooting out there, like when you're going to like, are you shooting, like, are you getting contracted out by surfers when you go and surf at the beach? Or is that kind of just like, you just want to go shoot and you go do it? Or like, how's that work? It, it's, it's more like right now. I'm kind of just slowly build, building my connections more so. So, like, I don't really care to get paid right now on that aspect. I'd rather um, build more of, like, a client base or just, like, relationships with pro surfers. Yeah. So just so they can see, like, where I'm at. So, no, everything's just, like, word of mouth and um, kind of just, like, people that I meet over the over time like they'll be like oh like yeah. let's go shoot or something and then I'll be like yeah let's go do it and it's like oh go buy me breakfast or but now more like and it took me a while to like kind of find like who I am as a videographer as like money and stuff like that so it definitely took me a while and like um yeah I don't know it's just like you gotta find yourself per se yeah, for sure. And you got to have, like, a style. Like, I definitely get that. I feel like a lot of people, like, especially, like, in, like, the Midwest, like, where I'm at. And it's, like I said, like, it's the, we're in, like, different spheres. Like, it's the same thing, but it is different. Like, the culture of surfing videography and, like, surf culture is very different than fo- football culture and the people that I'm usually working with. Like, probably almost, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of parallels, but, like, very different. Um, but the people that I work with a lot, like, are a lot of the, like, places that I'm at. Um, are like big believer like there's a big push for like don't do free work don't do all like if you're a videographer like you should always get paid da, da, da. and I agree with that to an extent but the bottom line is like if you haven't picked up a camera before or like if you're like just starting off you can't like expect to get paid and even like now like if I'm in a situation like for example if I wanted to be a surf videographer right now I can't go to a professional surfer even if I met one and like be like hey you want to pay me like a grand to go film you surfing the dude's not going to be like but the first thing they're going to ask is like have you ever like done this before and i'd be like oh i film football but not like it's completely different skills like i if i wanted to film surf i couldn't be expected to film to get paid doing that immediately and i feel like that's kind of like what people get like lost on sometimes because i know a lot of people that are like don't do free work don't do that don't do that which to an extent i like i feel like if you know what you're doing and you're good then you should get paid yeah, but at the same time, it's like there's a, a point that you kind of have to get to where like you have built this resume where now you can like if you don't have anything to show them, then why would you get you got to have like something to be like, this is why I deserve money from you to like give you a video because I can guarantee you that like this is the quality that you're going to get. Oh, 100 percent. Like, was it I just worked with Red Bull a couple weeks ago uh, at the surf ranch. They hired us. And I was like the bottom, the totem pole. You had like the like the best surf videographers in the world, and they're like, I don't know if we're gonna pay you, kind of thing. And yeah. like, look, my boss got me like two hundred a day, which I was like, you know what? I would take, I'll take two hundred a day, and I'll go there and meet every single person, and just work my butt off and build connections. And I built like I built so many connections. Like I have all these people now in my contacts, and now like I'm getting hit up. Like, hey, like we need you to go do this. Like, and I'm like, I'll drop everything and go do it. So like, as like another perspective, like even though it's like shit pay, like it is what it is. Like you can like build better relationships with people because you're put into like a scenario where like you can grow. Yeah. No, like I deserve this, and then like you deliver something com- terrible or like not what they're looking for, and then you'll never get hired again. Yeah, I definitely, I I hundred percent agree with that. 
hundred percent talk because there's the industry is so small and it's super saturated. So like if one person hears that like you're terrible, you'll like you just won't get hired and it sucks. And I've seen it happen lots of times with people. Yeah, it's it's competitive, dude. It's crazy. I I've seen that too in like our like in like the in like in my side of it. Like people talk to each other. Like it's like people definitely communicate. And like yeah, and there's definitely like clubs too of like people that like are like yeah, I'd say club like groups of people that kind of like are like you were saying like those like top of the line videographers. Like they're they've got like a group and they're like we work with these people. And so any way you can like get your foot into that door to be like, I'm one of those people now, like that's how you succeed. That's how you like end up like, that's how you can make a career out of this. So I a hundred percent get that. And sometimes you don't get paid or sometimes you get shit paid for it. But like, I mean, at the end of the day, like 10 years down the line, like you're going to be super thankful that you did that because then you're going to be in a great position. So hundred percent agree. Exactly. I mean, we're only so young, like, yeah, exactly. I, th- I have to keep reminding myself of that every day. And there's a lot of these old guys that are like dying, per se, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely get that, dude. I, I have to remind myself that every day. I forget that I'm like twenty still. Like I'm not even like like I'm such a baby. Like and I mean you're only a little bit older than me, so it's like we're not even like we're both like so young still in the sense of like creatively. Like I have to keep reminding myself that it work because I like want to make something, and I'm just like, oh, I want to do this and this and this and this. My boss is like, oh, like you know, like we're gonna try, but like the end of the day it's not my job like my job is like so like at least like in my position too in oklahoma like i work for the athletics i don't work for the football team or for the athletics department and i'm just fortunate enough to be able to like primarily produce content for the football team um but like that's like not guaranteed right and it's not something that's like for me going to stay or uh it's not guaranteed. Like we're still like students. Like the positions that like are like young and like we're learning and like we don't know any. Like we know a lot, especially I feel like like you and me. Like compared to like other people that might be at our positions, I feel like working in sports, um, with surfing and like what I do, gives you like because of how much you do it, because of how much you work and like film, gives you such an advantage over people that like don't do that. Um, I've definitely seen that, like, at least in, like, in my college setting, like, like, OU, like, I'll be in classes and, like, not to, like, I'm not trying to, like, devalue, like, every, like, all these people are there because, like, definitely, like, everyone is at different points at different parts and, like, everyone gets to there, gets there eventually. But, like, I'll be in these classes and, like, I'll know, like, everything, like, I haven't really learned anything yet. Like, because I already know everything because I just, like, do it every day. And it's, like, you kind of, like, if you want to get, like, good at it, like, that's something you kind of have to do. But, like, going back to, like, doing it, like, with my work and, like, being a part-time employee, it's, like, tough because it's, like, you do all of that and then you're, like, I have this crazy idea for a video and then I go and pitch it to them and they're, like, that's not your job. Like, it's, like, it's like yeah, like, it's a great idea, dude, but, like, it's not our, like, it's not, at least for me, like, I have to keep reminding myself it's, like, not my time yet. It's, like, I'm not a full-time, like, once I graduate and go get a full-time job, that's when I can be, like, this is what we're doing. Like, let's, like, make this crazy idea. And it's, it's tough sometimes because it's like, I feel like, especially for me, like I'm not a very patient person. I kind of have to like trick myself into being patient, but it's like, man, like I really want to make this. And they're like, yeah, dude, like you're a student. Like, it's like, we're not, that's not, we're not doing that. Like, which is fine. Like, it's not on them. Like, it's just like a matter of like, we're going to be there. That's pretty stupid that they even say that. Like they, sh- you should be given those chances of just like, this is your idea. Let's do it. You know, like, well, and it's not like that. Like, it's more like, let me give an example. So like, cause I, they do do that. Like last year, our season kickoff video, um, I was given the, like, I had this idea like in the summer. Cause my job with like during the season, I create our Friday high videos. So we have put up a fit. Our games are on Saturday, Saturday. So every Friday, Friday night, we put out hype videos internally. We call them like Friday night hypes. So we'll put out these videos every Friday. 
Um, and for our big games last year, we wanted to do longer videos, like longer, um, to like, kind of like emphasize, like, this is a big game. It's going to be like 16 by nine, or even like we did like even wider than that, actually. Um, so we did like 16 by nine for those. And then like any game, like if we were just playing like a bad school, like if we were just playing Kansas or like some school that wasn't very good, we would do like four by five to like quick, like edit, like, and just be like, oh, look, football. And like, just kind of like get to the next game kind of thing. Which was fine. Like that's that's not. But uh, so our first game, I had this idea. We had a new head coach, and I was like, "We're gonna make like this killer recap of everything we did." And they were like, "Hell yeah!" Like they like they loved it. I gave them it. I gave them the first draft, and they were like, "This is freaking awesome." So like, and then I had like a Nebraska idea where we got some players. And like, so it's not that that's the problem. It's more like I get excited. Like it's more uh, like it's not like I'm not like digital content like the full-time employee for football so like i'm not gonna be at every football practice and i'm not gonna be like out because i don't need to be there like it's not my job that's more what i meant in the sense of like they're not like shooting down my ideas it's because they actually they along the lines of like opportunities they've been like fantastic like i've had more opportunities than like a lot of people i feel like my age could say they've had especially like what i'm creating for like ou football which like in a college football sense is like, like we're like top five football team historically. And like, they're like, it's crazy. So it's, it's very like, considering that I produce as much as I do for them, like I'm very, very lucky, but it is like a matter of like, like more of the sense of, I have this idea right now. I don't want to talk too much about it because I think I might be able to get it pushed along the line, but I have, a, I have a pretty cool idea for a first game video for this year, because last year I like, I made that video and it's the best video I've ever made. Um, it's that one that I posted on Instagram where I was like, this is the best video I've ever made. And I'm like, did that? I don't know if you saw it, but that's like what I'm talking about. And I want to one up it this year. And so I have like this really grand idea. I wanted to like go on our football field and like smoke out the entire field. But like, how am I like, I can't do that. Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? Like that's more where it's like, yeah, I can like tell my boss to do this and everything. And like, we can try, but it's like, I don't, I just simply don't have as much pull as a full-time employee is going to have. And so that's more like, where you just go ahead and do it. And then, yeah, I mean, maybe it doesn't really work like that. Unfortunately, <laughs> I could try, but like, they're pretty tight with that kind of stuff They're Yeah. But it's fun, dude. I, I love it. And we, it's, it's pretty cool. Like we're, we're both like our trajectory is like, like five, 10 years from now, dude, we're both going to be fucking killing it. It's going to be so cool to see, like, I hope, and I hope our paths cross, too, like, when we're doing all this. Like, I, I don't know if they would. I don't know when they would, but that'd be cool if, like, we did, like, some kind of, like, I don't know, just some kind of collab at some point. That'd be sick. Or if you wanted to try something different, get you on a job. Oh, dude, well, I'd 100% be down for that. Like, I, I think we I don't know if we're coming out to California this summer, but I definitely want to, like, shoot some, some surf at the beach and, like, do that just for, like, a real standpoint and because... I love shooting and like, that'd be fun to like go and do that. Um, I want to kind of transition into one more, uh, like one final thing that I kind of want to like take the last summer discussion before we kind of wrap this up. Um, we talked about it a little at the beginning with like just posting stuff, but I kind of wanted to get, um, break this down a little more, um, about like vertical and horizontal. And like, I wanted to get your opinion on it. Like how you feel about like posting vertical versus horizontal, just everything, like how you feel about it. Um, I see you smiling. Like, what's what's your opinion on that? I, I, I feel like you might have maybe a strong opinion on this. Um, I feel like shooting, like, especially surfing-wise, it's so hard to, like, keep it in frame if you're shooting for vertical. Because, like, I'm not shooting vertical. I'm shooting horizontal, but then I crop yeah. it. Well, clearly. But it is pretty annoying, not going to lie. Like, I'd rather see, like, the whole maneuver as, like, a horizontal shot knowing that like all the algorithms and like if you get you get more screen with the vertical you kind of have to put into vertical so i don't really like the vertical but i'll just do it just to get like the content out in the viewership yeah i definitely agree with that a lot of my stuff like i i have content that like i could keep like posting but it just doesn't look good on vertical. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. 
And it's tough because it's like we shoot horizontal. Like it's like we're not like shooting or like landscape. Like we don't shoot um, like vertically. And I see even like I'll see videos. Like I've seen a couple wedding people do this, which is crazy to me. Um, like just on TikTok and stuff or I'll see like other things where like people are shooting vertically. I can't. I, I don't know if I'll ever shoot vertically. Like I can't even imagine like. Now, I, I say that to say that I have shot vertically before. Like, if I'm filming a video in my room, like, if I'm making, like, a breakdown, and I know it's going to be vertical format, and it's not going on my demo reel, then, yeah, I'll shoot vertically. But, like, I, I, I know some people that have, like, gone and, like, shot, like, like, it's only for social, and they shot vertically. And that's just, like, well, I guess it makes sense, but at the same time, it's, like, I don't, that'd be, like, I would be doing that, and I feel like I'd just be cringing the entire time. I feel like I would just hate it. Have you ever been asked to shoot vertically before by, like, any clients or anything like that? Like, No. Actually, no. Always like, horizontal. Are you guys posting, like, when you're producing content for, like, the surf ranch or anything like that, is it, are they posting vertical clips? Always horizontal. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, that, that's not too bad. I mean... I, I know that, like, a lot of the stuff that you post on social is vertical, but that's, like, algorithm, right? So, like, that's the same. Yeah, it it's more just, like, how many views could I get? <laughs> yeah, no, I get that 100%. I mean, that's literally every video I post. So I'm like, let's see what I can do on this. Um, but, yeah, dude, it's it's tough. It's, like, I really... The thing is, I, there's a, I feel like there's a time and a place for vertical. And for what you want to do with, like, storytelling, I feel like vertical video, and I'm going to be... This is like something that I've I've had this debate with my boss and like coworkers before. Is like, I feel like vertical video is not like a good medium for like telling stories, and like actually communicating like emotion. Um, because I feel like a lot of like as a cinematographer and like shooting, like when you're like getting those shots, like it's in landscape. Like you need to be able to see that. Like I feel like vertical is like great for like really quick video. And, like, the swiping and, like, trying to, like, have quickly edited clips. Like, if I'm ever editing a video that I want to be, like, super hype and, like, a lot of action and movement, I'll usually go, like, like, my rule of thumb that I've kind of created for myself is the taller the video, the quicker the video. And then, like, the wider the video, the more you're going to, like, pull it back and, like, slow it down. Right. That makes, yeah, it's 100%. But it's, like... It's it's definitely interesting because I know that there's some people that will like, and I haven't met anyone actually like this, but I've seen people like like talk about it before. Where it's like, I know there's definitely some people out there that think that like, in 20 years, like we're gonna watch movies vertically, and like they're gonna make movies that are vertical. And, like, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> It's definitely an interesting thing. That, do you think that? Do you think that people will make there will be vertical movies in twenty years? Okay, I feel like people will try, but I'm not gonna watch them. That sounds stupid. Like imagine going to and even see like the full picture. Like that's like just dumb. But it's like I mean, it's I like being like the devil's advocate for it because it's like it is the same thing. It's just up and up and down instead of like that. Like so, if you went to it, like if they built a new theater. That was for vertical, like a, a narrower theater, or maybe it's like narrow and then it like kind of comes back like that. It could work, but it would be like, wouldn't that be weird? Like I, I don't know. Like, it's 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 fun food for thought because it's like, I don't think we're going that way. But some people will like would die on the like the idea that like in twenty thirty years, like everything we consume is going to be vertical. Um. Which is interesting to think of. I don't think that's going to happen. I definitely think people, like you said, will try to make vertical videos. I think there's some people that have already tried to do it. Um, I think maybe like, oh, I don't remember the name of the company. There was like one company that like actually like was like a streaming service that only made vertical movies and they like went out of business, which like obviously, I think they might've been a little too far ahead of their time. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about. Because I'll do, I do find myself like, I don't know if you ever do this. Like if you're like scrolling through social or anything like that. And then like you like land on a clip on your phone and you're just like watching it like this. And then you just like watch it for like seven minutes. And you're like, I can't believe I just like watched that. Um, and sometimes, or even like, do you remember when Snapchat used to put out like, 
that was like, or maybe you don't, maybe I'm just weird, but they, or maybe it was like BuzzFeed. They had those like rectangles at the bottom and they had like TV shows on Snapchat. No. Okay. Well then I'm just weird. Maybe I was the only one that watched those. Maybe that's why those are gone, but they had like shows on Snapchat that were like, like there's like a murder mystery one. And it was like, they'd like make a new one every week. And it was like a five minute vertical, like show that you would watch. And oh, like that tattoo one, just kidding. Yeah. I would watch some of those. Yeah. Like I wouldn't like be like, Oh man, like I can't wait for the next episode. But like, if I scroll through my stories and then I like, click get to the end and then it starts it, I would be like, I guess I'm watching this now. Like it wasn't like, and I would like watch it. And I mean, the acting was terrible and like everything was like not very good, but I would still watch it. And it was like, I don't know. It's interesting to think like, I, I definitely think that like for like phones, vertical is like, it's, that's all it's, it's the future. Like I think for like consuming content, like on our personal devices, like I think people are done with like flipping their phone horizontally. Um, just because of the way people are doing it. You know what I think is better though? This is kind of more like in the surf industry, but like holding premieres and like getting bands and like getting beer. I mean, not yeah. beer, but uh, I know this is for school, but. Um, oh, no, I, no, they don't care. All right. Uh, but like just kind of like bringing the whole community together, like that's a big thing. Like there was just a premiere, what was it, last Friday, where like couple surf flicks came on and like everyone came came out and just like getting everyone together and sitting in the theater and just like watching it like those are like super fun which is like awesome i I didn't know they did that that's super cool actually so yeah like a lot of people in the surf industry do that like that's my big goal like it's on my board like goals for this year is like have a surf movie and premiere it and get like a couple bands to come and just get people like to come dance and like watch some surf stuff like that's like the ultimate goal because like who cares about like like having it on like youtube or whatever like the ultimate goal is like having everyone just come out and like watch it like that's like really sick that's i actually love that's so cool dude and that that's that's i didn't know that that's really interesting um yeah that's actually really sick i that is something that i would definitely want i remember we just screened that documentary we made um, and we were supposed to watch it in like our campus theater and we were going to have like the dude who was about, he was going to pull up and like, it wasn't going to be like that, but it was going to be like, people were going to watch our doc in the theater, which that was going to be sick. But then the tornado hit, our professor got stuck in Chicago or no, she was stuck in Las Vegas actually for the competition that we might submit it to. Um, I don't, maybe she was connecting from, I don't know, Chicago somewhere involved in that, but she was stuck because she couldn't get to Oklahoma because of the tornadoes. And so we had to cancel class. We just did it on zoom. And so we got like robbed of like watching it in a theater. But that is like, that's something that's like a bucket list thing for me is like watching a film that I've made. And like same thing for you, it seems like is like seeing something that you've made, like on a screen with a whole bunch of people that like, are you like, you're like around you that you surround yourself with that, like you work with that you respect or like friends and family. Like that'd be, that's such a cool like thing to think about that. I feel like, yeah, like that's that's like almost the polar opposite of like vertical video because it's like so quick and it's like slowing things down, like having an event. I love that live music. That's sick. I didn't. That's super cool that you guys. It's like a party, but like you're watching a, like a movie. Like mm-hmm. a couple. That's it's super. What you help you with? Uh, we're get you know, have it screened on the first of May. Awesome. Nice, dude. A little bit of like my goal is happening, but not to like what I want. Yeah, you want to, like, produce it, like, make it. Like, you want to, like, be that guy, right? Well, actually, I mean, I did produce, make, and edit. Oh, okay. But it's it's totally different from surfing. It's totally different. Gotcha. It's, uh... Yeah. I could just give a little side point. Like, we... This one's about... It's called the uh, We Are Ocean. It's, like, this organization where we take cancer survivors and we have them try new experiences. So, for this, like, mini-doc, it was, like about but uh, we got six cancer survive five cancer survivors five veterans there was this outrigger race in catalina which was 32 miles long and they did the 32 mile race and they, they would switch when we we're in the middle of the channel we held interviews documented the whole like experience they 
beat what they thought they're going to do. They thought they're going to take nine hours, but they did it in under six hours, which is oh, insane. Wow. Um, the mini documentary is about how one of the cancer um, ladies, Alex, she's actually in chemo. Last week, she finished her final remission of chemo. Uh, final, what's it called? Dose? Would it be dose? Or maybe uh, treatment? Treatment, yeah. Final treatment of chemo. She's had breast cancer, and she's like, I'm doing this race. I'm going to freaking do it. And she kicked ass. And I was just like, wow. Like, this lady doesn't really care that she has cancer right now. I mean, she cares, but she's like, I'm going to go do something else. You know, like, cancer's not going to kill me. Goes and does it, and it's, like, so powerful. It's like, you look at life, and you're like, wow. Like, I'm being lazy today, and I don't, I'm literally super healthy, and I could go do whatever I want. Like, yeah. those are the type of stories that are just, like, wow. Like, I can, I don't know, there's just more to the world. Like, you could just see more, you know, like, versus, like, just a regular story about someone that was just a surfer, you know? Like, these are more, like, meaningful. Yeah. No, I get That's that. how I like to be a part of. Like, that's just, like, what this little thing's about. It's, like, just to have, like, yeah. different outlooks. That's sick, though. I love that, dude. That's awesome. That's such a great story. That's such a cool. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I think that's gonna go, and that's. Uh, are you guys? Is, is it already done? Have you? Is that what you're? Is that May first, or is that down the line? Um, that's May first. It's not done yet. I'm still working on just like finishing the audio, and then I have to get it color corrected, and then it's good. But all the dialogue is done, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean it's a, it's a, that's a thing for everyone, dude. I'm, I've been like spreading gospel at that. I've been like, you gotta try this out. You gotta try like the AI. It's so good. And sound engineers are freaking out right now, dude. Because <laughs> it's so close to being like the only problem is like if you don't want the audio to be perfect, like if you want it to be a little spotty, um, then it's not good because it makes it, it makes it sound like you're in a studio. But like for everything I've used it for, it's been perfect. Like I'll just record voiceovers on my phone, and throw it in, and it sounds great. So technology is just getting insane. Yeah, I just got like this three hundred dollar mic, and then like. Now they come out with this, it's like, I mean, it's great, but it's like, it's like not even like, like after this, like this podcast, like I'm just going to use your Zoom audio and it's going to sound crazy. It's going to sound the same as mine, which is being recorded on a $300 microphone. Wow. Uh, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to see this. No, it'll be good. I, it's been, I mean, we've had some great stuff. I'm excited to, to get this out and hopefully my professor, um, shout out professor, um, enjoys it. I can't believe he's gonna have to watch all of these different podcasts. Every like the whole length. I doubt it, but, but I mean, who knows? But I mean, I, this is for class, but it's also like not for like I've wanted to do this for a while, and then I saw I could take the podcasting class, and I was like, now I'm gonna like kill two birds with one stone, and I get to like make the podcast I wanted to make, and I'm getting a grade for it, so it like goes towards my degree. So it's perfect. It like really worked out pretty well. Um, just not too great when like I procrastinate with work and freelance and then I'm like, oh shoot, I got all fill a whole bunch of podcast episodes. <laughs> but that's fine. I'm not super pressed about that. Um I'm more about just like producing like actually good content and like putting something out that people can watch, and, like see and like I think it's so interesting for like people that are like watching these that I've like gotten feedback from so far. Like I mean I I just posted Ethan's like a couple days ago. I didn't really post it too much because I'm working on getting everything on Spotify and everything before I like really put it out. Um, but like, I was talking to like some people that like, I kind of seen it. Like, I really like m this angle of it because it's like, we've done a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, we really haven't done anything yet. Like we're very like new. And so it's like a fresh perspective. Whereas like some people that have been in the industry forever have been like, Oh, I've done all this stuff. Like we're getting into this and like we're going in and like we're optimistic and excited and like, but we still like have done things like where we know and we've been in it long enough to know like what we're doing, what we're getting into and where we're going to be and like have realistic like, expectations and like, but this, but we still like are before like anything really like picks up traction or like, I mean, you got nearly got 6 million views. So for all I know, like for, and, and that's crazy. I, I'm really, that you, can you send that to me when we're done with this? Cause I don't think I saw that. Yeah, have it? Maybe I have. Maybe I just didn't realize. Is it on your personal account or is it on? It's on. It's on my personal. Let's see. It's it's this one. 
Oh, I saw that. That has six million views. Oh, let's see. Let's give you my insight. Um, six million nine hundred twenty-nine thousand views. Holy crap, dude! Like two hundred twenty-five thousand likes, fourteen thousand saves, one hundred thirty-five thousand shares. It's pretty good. Yeah, no, that's that is nuts. I'd like that's that's viral. The rest of my stuff is not like that. <laughs> And that goes back to the, like, you just post a clip and people are like, we fuck with this. But then, like, sometimes people just don't. They don't. It's just, it's, social media is so weird. Was when I filmed Kelly Slater at the pool, like, he just, like, popped out of nowhere and was there. And then he posted my, re- like, reel on, shared it up to his story that that was really cool. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, I could, the like, go, the right go just posted my reel on his story. I could just kill myself now. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's nothing else that matters. No, I feel that, dude. I've had a couple of moments where I've been like, that was sick. Like, um, Bleacher Report, that was cool. They uh, When they posted the video that I made in the World Series last year, we were um, Oklahoma softball. I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming you're probably not very familiar with the college softball scene. But OU softball is, like, absolutely nuts. Like, we're back to back national champions. Right now we're thirty we're forty and one. We've only lost once this year. Um and we're like they're just cracked. Like they beat UCLA, who was a second place team earlier this year, fourteen to one. Um, they they just cracked. Last year they had the best softball player of all time on the team. Her name's Jocelyn Olo, she was cracked. Hit, hit more home runs and didn't hit home runs that year, I think. It's like what the stat ended up being. She's just like absolutely crazy. And so I worked the Softball World Series, which is an OKC. And I was up there, and we were playing in the semifinal. OU. I was working for the NCAA. I wasn't, work, I wasn't working for OU. But, um, and I was the editor. So my role like in the games was to edit live content and also make a recap for the game that has to go out within 15 minutes of the game being over. So I'm like editing the video while the game's happening with like our shooters that like, run, we're running cards while the game's happening. And then I'm also editing clips for social that we can post during the game. And so home runs hit. I think T.R.A. Jennings, one of our really good players, to home run. She's like lead off, so she hits like second. Um, and so she hits a home run, and I like text in our group chat. I'm like, I'm going to need that so we can flip that for social. Before I can even finish texting that, another home run is hit. So we go back-to-back home runs. And then I'm like, okay, you know what, like, I guess we have two home runs. So I'm like, all right, like just sit a second, like let's wait. Then they hit a third home run. They ended up hitting three home runs or four. I think they had four home runs in that inning. And like they scored like 10 runs in the inning. It was like crazy. So I was just like, never mind. Like just after the inning, like give me your cards and then I'll just like make it. And so like I ended up making an inning recap and I just like took all the home runs they hit in that inning, which. It was it was a lot of home runs. I think it might have been more than four, but I'm gonna undersell it rather than oversell it. So I'm gonna say four. Um, so I just like one, two, three, four, like boom, 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 cut it up, and then I just like gave it to our social person, and I was like, "You didn't ask for this, but like, if you want to post it, post it." And he was like, "Oh, this is great." So he posts it, and then like ESPN, Bleacher Report, all of them like grabbed it and were like, "Look at these home runs!" And it like blew up, and I was like, "Fuck oh, you!" Yeah, like that was my idea. Like that was an audible that I was like called. I was like, "We're just gonna do this." And it worked out. And so that was like, that was probably my like closest moment that I can have to like your 6 million viewed. But honestly, masterpiece of a dude boogie boarding. <laughs> that's a good point though. On like real time, um, just like editing per se, like that outrigger race, like no one really like, for example, like post content, like boom, like that. Yeah. You know, if you get like content out super fast, people are like, oh my gosh, like look at this guy. Like he was already there and like now he already has content out. Like you can get hired for more stuff. Like for example, WSL, they hire guys just for that. Yeah. Real time editing and then get a, an edit quick like that. Now I just did that for that Outrigger race. Now they hired me to go to the championships in like July up in like Oregon, which I'm like, sure. Like I'll go do that. Like, more people will just start seeing you. Like, your name's going to keep popping up, popping up, popping yeah. up. I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And then they're looking up. You're like, oh, my gosh. Like, I've seen his stuff. And then you're just going to keep getting put in projects. Like, 
trust me, it's gonna it happens. Like yeah. I was one to not believe in that and now it happens. Yeah, it's sick, dude. It's really cool the way um all that works out. Like the way word of mouth travels and like and when it works for you, when you like meet somebody and then they're like, Oh, I've seen what you've made before. Like, that's like the coolest thing ever. Like when you produce something and someone like appreciates it that like knows what they're talking about and they're like, I want to hire you because of what you did. It's like, there's nothing more rewarding than that. Um, it's pretty cool. But yeah, dude, it's been great talking to you. I think we've probably been going for about an hour. <laughs> so um, we'll probably wrap it up here, but it's been great talking, Cam. Dude, it's been awesome. Um, do you want to like tell everyone where they can find you? So for anyone that's made it this far and like give them your socials, your apps or anything like that. Uh, well, my Instagram is Cameron underscore Nelligan. Um, you can probably find me on Ryan's Instagram. It's probably like the best way. Or if you like add it, that's another way. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely tag you in all this. I'm like, you'll be, so don't even worry about it. You'll, you'll get your clout. <laughs> all right. No, I'm, honestly, I'm pretty stoked that like I was even able to just like talk to you because like, I don't really talk to a lot of people about this. It's kind of like, oh, he just shoots surfing, you know, like yeah. it's cool to like be able to talk to you and like other people like in the industry and kind of like, you know, have our different opinions and like kind of just see where everyone's at because I didn't go to film school. I kind of just like started working and like being a production assistant, being like an AC and then like working my way through like what I want to become versus like you're at school and you're kind of learning everything and then you're to get thrown into like what like what the industry is you know like you're like there yeah. not like in it yet like yeah i was like a, weird. a pissed off producer or an asshole editor like yeah. and they're being a dick and you're like i kind of just got to put my head down and like keep working hard and then like there's this one guy i'm not gonna say his name but i worked with him during my apprenticeship and he was the biggest asshole I've ever dealt with in my life. And he like tried to get me fired because I was like just being stupid. But we were, I worked through it and now we're best friends and he helps me get jobs. And he's won like a couple Emmys. Like this guy is just like badass. But he's yeah. also not. But he's like, I want you to go through that because when you go on these other jobs, there's going to be a lot of assholes and there's going to be a lot of people that are just dicks. And you kind of just got to put your head down and work through it. And then they're like, wow, like, that's just kind of like the industry is made up of dicks, but you kind of just got to work hard and keep going. Cause like, you're going to get through it. And oh my God. Yeah. That's kind of, it's a weird one to leave it off on, but pretty much I'd have to say it's just, you got to work hard. Yeah, for sure, dude. And like, yeah, I agree. Like definitely like just grinding and like getting your, like just kind of getting the work done because that's what I've heard too. Is like, and I, I haven't worked with anyone. I've been pretty fortunate to like, only have problems with like my professor that I had that problem with but like other than that like I've been pretty fortunate to like work with people that have been pretty easygoing and like not really um causing problems or if people have tried to cause problems I've been good enough to like like just in like the sense of like what I know versus what they know like they can't do anything because I know more than them and so I kind of just like can't can't do anything so it'll be interesting I'm excited about it it'll be Interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, like once I kind of break out of this and like go um, and do that professionally. But I'm excited, dude. It's going to be fun. And it's awesome. So I appreciate you talking to me, dude, and spending time doing this. Of course, Ryan. Dude, I've had... Like, I'm excited that we even did this. So yeah. All right. Up. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you guys for getting this far. If you did, uh, comment. Uh, hmm comment Cameron's name just Cameron in the comments if you got this far uh, so thanks for watching guys